G'day, I'm Adam, VK4GHZ. We're at the Redcliffe and Districts Radio Club Rooms, and this is part two of the Brisbane VHF Group's Microwave Tune-Up Day. Uh, thanks you all for coming, and welcome to the Redcliffe and Districts Radio Club. My name's Peter, VK4EA, who people don't know me. Introduce Kevin Johnson, who's the Vice President as well um, of the club, and big, big thank you to Doug Friend, VK4OE, and Bob Basco for bringing their gear. Um, have fun, test, tune, we're going to put some sausages on shortly. Uh, for those who don't know, with the loser, you've probably found it by now, please close the door. And there's um, coffee and tea, help yourselves, a bit of a donation would be nice, and there's drinks and chockies for sale in the fridge. Have fun. Right, that's with 13.5 13 milliwatts coming out of the transfer, going through whatever's losses in there. It's been driving this one, which should be a three watt PA, yeah, yep. unit. So what do we do? We, yeah. just to get we, we can adjust that to get three watts out. Yeah. That's providing all the yeah. Overdriving it. This is a um, down here, a, a 3.4 gig uh, septum feed for an EME uh, dish feed, and it was made by Phil VK4 CDI, and he had it uh, working, you know, built according to plan, and we've just adjusted one of the one of the adjustment screws on the back of it for uh, best return loss, one of the ports, and now we're going to change over onto the other port on the other side and uh, check in for its uh, best, um, uh, best return loss. So this was getting 23 dB return loss after we adjusted it on this port number one, and port number two on the other side will uh, shortly be tested. Put back on the other side, and now we're looking at feed number two, which you know, one is for a transmit and one is for receive. We won't be able to tune what the solder is back on. All right. It seems like Phil's got a uh, an issue with that, <coughs> and it tends to fall off. So, so that is currently showing about 14 dB return loss, and you're going to adjust it with that screw. Yeah, it's broken off. Oh, you mean the yeah, the, the nuts on solder. All right. It looks like it was never soldered. Not well enough. Yeah. Take that one away and uh, we'll fix it up. Try and fix it up. Yeah. Yep. Uh, this is VK4 Zulu Hotel Lima transmitting on uh, 10.5 gigs. Uh, this particular unit was used to uh, to get the uh, the VK4 and VK2 uh, uh, 10 gig records. Yeah, there's a great day here. Lots of equipment, as you've probably seen. Thanks very much. <coughs> this needs a recalibration. It changes. Noise figure meters change uh, in time, so you've actually got a. <laughs> it's got to do an IF calibration and then a, a recalibration, and then it will come up on the correct. Speed. At the moment. The noise head is connected directly to the input, so it should come up on zero, 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 zero. So it's being noise, it doesn't always turn that on. Oh, okay. We did it a bit better. VK4 can you check this to see what the sensitivity is like on 2403, 440 because I can't get the beat of it. I just want to see how sensitive it is. Okay, is this an FM, is it? Uh, any, any sideband, FM, whatever band. Oh, that's clear. Yep. A little technique that Graham 3XDK taught me. It's a little bit of brass shim, we can't see that on the end of a bamboo skewer. And just move around the filter, all the English tracks in there, mm. until you find a peak and signal. And there it is, you might get mark yeah. it is, cut a bit of shim, sold it in, it on. check that's okay, move it occasionally. Just keep working your way around the circuit until you peak all the rest of the signals up, and that's snake baking. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Is this supposed to be up here? Yeah, yeah that's just up here, eh? And, um, I'd just like to get another receiver yeah. uh, on another frequency just to verify that the SIGGEN is 
yeah. is not misbehaving. Or okay, so we're just checking the receiver sensitivity of this transverter, and that's about 100 minus 110 dBm. You can, you can hear the tone in there. Turn the, turn the signal off. So it's definitely there, that's 5.7, 6 gigahertz. gigahertz. And why is it going? So there's the signal. And to check your, if you want to peak up your receive chain, use the snowflake jig. You move around until you hear the signal increase. In this case, I think this peaked up already. So every time I touch it, it actually goes down. And you can know it's working. You can hear the tone going up and down as I touch the filter. And one thing to be careful of is you don't short any devices out. Well, no, don't work. Yep. So I don't think I'm going to get any advantage by snowflake on this particular board. It's done, it's, it's pretty much optimised as much as possible. This is a standard um, 5 16 AF um, spanner and it's one of the essential tools when you're playing around with microwaves uh, because it's the, it's the correct uh, cross flats distance for SMA connectors. So it's possible to just quickly uh, grab onto the SMA connector shell and, uh, and tighten it up properly. And SMA connectors do need to be uh, just pinch tightened as well. But this banner has been uh, pared away, ground away on the end so that the, uh, the sides are very small. And that makes it possible to reach into these difficult to locate places on, a, uh, on an SMA relay. The other useful modification to this banner that I've made is to grind away a gap in the end of the ring section so that that can actually go over a piece of 141 coax. For those of you who don't know, that is actually 1.141 coaxial cable. And then that can go onto the SMA uh, connector and be a very positive uh, grab of the connector and then the banner is easily removed. One of the essential tools when you're playing around with microwaves All I did to make this was I put the copper pieces between two pieces of wood with a clamp around the outside and then I just used a, a gas propane torch to, to actually solder the whole that. lot. And yeah. that took probably, um, it took probably about 10 minutes to actually make the whole yeah. assembly yeah. and I had pre-drilled the holes for the SMAs to, yeah. to solder those on. Yeah, and, and how did you lengthen the pin inside? Uh, that's the hard bit. That's the hard bit. It's basically it's just a piece uh, of soldered into the SMA ah, right. socket. Yeah. The SMA bulkhead socket. Yeah. Hey, not great, but I reckon it certainly is. cost effective. No, I reckon it is great. Um, yeah. Good afternoon. You're uh, five and nine, and uh, I'm located at Redcliffe. <laughs> <laughs> no, it look, sounds good. Big loud signal. So, um, yeah, I don't know how many herbs are coming out of yours, but uh, there's a couple of watts coming out of this one. Um, so, uh, yeah, it sounds all right. It's working after all these years of inactivity. Good. Glad you came along. VK4 ZHL, VK4 OE. Yeah, that's too. We'll uh, we'll sign on this one. Everything seems to be working okay. Because it's two years since we switched on. Uh, VK4OE, VK4ZHL. Yeah, Hi, I'm Quentin of VK4AQF and this is an Anritsu spectrum analyzer from 100 kilohertz to 26.5 gigahertz. The resolution bandwidth on the spectrum analyzer is important because that shows you what the what sort of signal you can look at and what sort of signal you can separate apart because as the sweep goes you can't sweep a very very fine resolution at very on very on a very big bandwidth. So you have to sweep it down and then reduce the resolution bandwidth so you can see a modulation of one kilohertz, say on a one gigahertz signal, you can see the side bands plus or minus. These are reasonably reasonably stable. They're not perfect, they, they do need calibrating and they they don't have a they have a digital readout but it's um uh, it is a variable analog digital readout. It's not um, it's not like a modern one with a full counter in it. But it's it works, it works reasonably well once it's been running. It's been fairly stable. So yeah, okay.
Whatever we've done, okay, well, that's down on 10 gigs. You're right? Yeah. So, down on 10 gigs, 10.0, it was very, very good. Oh, that's out. 10.4, it's there, but 10.3, it's still that 14 dB, the 14 dB return loss that we had before. At what frequency, though? Hmm? At what frequency is uh, that trough? That's on the trough, the big trough, yeah. is 10.05 gigs. Okay. You can hear it like this. Yeah, it can. Let's see what happens as they're sliding in and out. Yeah. Do you think that could be the resonant frequency of the, of the reflector? <laughs> I can't say. Okay, so I might have taken too much metal off that. Maybe. Yeah, you put some back on. I'll just now just have a look at the depth of that trough as I slide this in and out. So go to the depth of the trough, and I'll just on the the ten point, yeah, the upper, the higher of the t frequencies. I'll put it down on ten three sixty eight, or and you can see it from what you're doing there. Oh yes, hang on then. Something's making it go down. What are you doing when you're doing it? I'm just sliding the waveguide in and out, so I'm altering the distance to the dish. Unfortunately, I have to put my hand around as well. So, so you can make it significantly better. It just doesn't slide freely. It comes one way and then not the other. Well, that's 16 dB return loss. Minute. I'll just get it a bit better. Let's try that again. How many dB is that now? It is now 19. Sorry, 18 and a half dB return loss. Okay. And the trough of that onto SSB. The frequency of that trough. That is nearly in a trough. That it still peaks a little bit above that. So in the in the depth of that second trough, yeah. what frequency is that? 10.5 still. But the what so what's happened is that there's a um, a, a dip in return loss, it comes up in the middle, it goes down again, and then it's off, up again. And we've, we've now reduced the height of that little mountain in the middle. Okay. Alright, well I'm now run to the limit of what I know now, so what are you going to suggest? Do we keep on...? I would say, um, be, be happy that the, the thing at 10.368 is heaps better than it was when we first started. Okay, then that's good enough? Yes. Be happy. Well, that was the Brisbane VHF Group's microwave chin-up day. As you can see, good attendance, lots of fun, and uh, lots of tweaking going on. So if you're thinking about getting into microwaves, as you can see, there's a lot of support here, a lot of help to uh, get you down that path successfully. This is Adam, VK4GHZ, at the Redcliffe Amateur Radio Club Rooms.